To whom it may concern, uh, I'm making this video in case I disappear. Um, and to Miss Hinckley specifically, if you're the one that finds this, if my Rosemary's okay, please take care of her. And um, I, I left uh, a month's rent in the drawer uh, next to my computer for you just in case unforeseen circumstances causes me to no longer be able to stay here. Uh, I, I, I didn't step out, I promise. It was circumstances out of my control, I assure you. And if you are an investigator listening to this, you need to shut down the hotel. Or, or mansion, or bed and breakfast, or whatever the fuck they want to call it. That place isn't normal. And and if you're listening to me, Jeremy, I warned you about this damn place, and I warned you about those damn people that came in here. I didn't feel right. Oh, I guess I should say what, who I am. Um, My name is Desdemona Miller. Uh... <laughs> My mother was a very learned woman, and it shows by the fact she named me something so cruel, but sounded so beautiful. I always wanted my friends to call me Des or Desi, but I don't have many friends. Um, enough about me, though. There's, if you're a federal investigator, which... I doubt my disappearance will cause that, but maybe if Jeremy's competent for once, he'll put this in an evidence locker and 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 if more disappearances occur, then I could be of some use to somebody. Maybe. Anyway, if you haven't been here before, this is a real small town. We got more cornfields than we do people. And uh, we're about an hour away from, you know, the the beach area. And, and um, not many people come here. And opening up a big fancy bed and breakfast on a rundown plantation normally isn't what's on rich white folks' mind. But for these ones, it was. I've heard of these tourist traps before, you know, using people's grand southern heritage to entice them to come and just watch the trees move in the breeze, I suppose. Anyway, these folks, they, they came here about two months ago. They took the dilapidated manor, we don't really know the name of. I tried looking it up at City Hall, but after that fire last spring, ain't nothing left for records. Anyway, they came here, they, they fixed it up, and it's beautiful, it, it's wonderful, but there, there's something in there. I, I don't know if it's some type of animal or if it's some poor soul that they've trapped, but I guess I should start with what I do there. I, I'm the night auditor. I, I essentially just make sure that the building doesn't catch fire without someone being alerted. And I, I deal with people's transactions, or I would be if anyone was staying there, but uh, uh, there's me and there's Myers, but Myers normally sleeps when I'm on shift because, you know, he's the maintenance man and, and I work the nights. Myers isn't from here. He's from the beachfront. Uh, apparently, he just needed to get away. I think it was because of drugs. Uh, but don't hold that against them. He's, he's a very sober man now. He's told me himself. He's very proud of it. Shows me that little chip he got from his support group. And I'm rambling because I don't want to talk about it. I do that a lot. All right, so uh, I'll tell you about my first night, and that'll give you a good scope of what happened. So my first night there at the manor, that's what they're calling it. 
I don't think they thought of any fancy name. I walk in the door and Myers is there. <clears throat> oh, uh, I, sh I should give you a description. Uh, he's a scrawny fella, uh, shaggy hair. Actually, you know what? He kind of looks like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but he's very kind and he, and he tells me that this place is weird and that I should be wary and to not go near the basement unless I got to. He showed me around, showed me all the pretty rooms and the foyer and the ballroom. They have a whole ballroom. It's, it's a beautiful trap, that place. Anyway, I get to the desk and there's a note left for me that um, <clears throat> was concerning. But by the time I had gotten back from the tour, it was already midnight and, well, there was no going back. So the number one rule is at midnight, doors are locked, everything's sealed, no one let in or out. Apparently it's an automatic system thing because when I tried to go to the door, it didn't move. I don't know what they were using, but it didn't look like there was a latch or anything. And I, I did try the lock, but it's an old door. Maybe they have some system that's in between the walls or the frame or something that shuts it tight, something I can't see. But anyway, at midnight, doors are sealed and locked. At 1 a.m., I have to check the halls, make sure there's nothing there. At 2 a.m., I am expected to clean up, you know, um, vacuum in and that kind of thing. Maya sleeps on the top floor, which there's only... Uh, Three stories. It's a huge mansion, and I have no idea how they fixed it in a month. But anyway, um, Myers is on the top story. So when I'm cleaning, he doesn't really notice. And he cleans his own hallway, so I don't got to go up on his floor. Now, the basement is always where bad things happen, but... The most concerning room is on the second floor. Essentially, when you'll walk into the manor, you'll see this big grand staircase and, and it sweeps out and you'll see the second floor up top and then there's another walkway and then there's the third floor above that. It, it, it looks like something princesses would walk down that... People at the bottom will be waiting with their cameras to shoot models and, and, and royalty. It's, uh, anyway, when you get up top on the second floor, you'll notice one hallway. At the end of it's a window. And at the other end is a door. They specifically tell me that in the rules, mind you, in the rules, they specifically tell me to never put anyone on the second floor unless absolutely necessary. And, um, the door is... a whole trap shut. And, and I mean trap shut. There's, there's plywood on it and, and chains and a big sign that says, Do not enter. And for me, I assumed that they had, you know, were trying to make a door to nowhere. You, I've heard of those in some hotels where they'll have fire doors that they open up and then at the bottom a firefighter can have a trampoline or something like that. So I thought, oh, well, of course, that's what it is. But then I noticed that the hallway was shorter. There's a room behind that door. And there's something. There's something in it. The next rule is at 3 p.m. Uh, or a.m. God, it's. It's so early and I'm so tired. Um, At 3 a.m. I'm expected to go there and feed. 
What's over behind there? They leave me these little meals for it. And I take it and I go up there. I notice that there's a little cut at the bottom of the door, uh, um, and the plates are just small enough to slide under what the normal door would be. It's hard to explain. I should probably draw a diagram or something. I, I got on the floor, and I, I peeked through the hole. And I, I saw something moving, scuttling. And I, I jumped up and I just, I ran. And the rest of the night I just sat there at the desk. At 4 a.m. I was supposed to do the auditing, but we didn't have any guests, so there was nothing to audit about. So I just sat there, and then at 6 a.m. I heard this little click, and the lights turned off, and the sun rose. I got up and I checked the front door, and it was open now. I should have left, but I, I, I didn't right away. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was w w wondering if this poor thing behind the door was like sloth from the Goonies. So I, I, uh, I had a chocolate bar in my bag and I went upstairs to it and I just slipped it under the door and I listened and I heard it unwrap it. And I heard it sniffing, and then I heard it eat it. And then I heard a knock. It was gentle. As if it was saying thank you. And I knocked back. I... I don't think whatever is behind that door wants to hurt me, but I have a feeling that if the owners find out, I, I could be the next one behind a door. I, I guess that's where I'm gonna leave this for now. Um, like I said, if, if I go missing, this is my account of what's going on there. And Jeremy, if you find this, this isn't a story. This is real. I don't, if I disappear, I don't want anyone else to have to. I'm going to go to bed.